this story was popularised under the name The Legend of Knockgrafton. And while it certainly is told about Knockgrafton Hill in County Tipperary, it's also told about many hills all throughout Ireland. Now, the version of the story I'm going to tell is actually told about Ard Skull Moat, also known as the Hill of Shouts. This is just outside the town of Rath Grumley. Living in Rath Grumley was a hunchback, a hunchback named Marta Byrne. And he was a very well respected and well liked person in the town of Rath Grumley. He was very kind, very patient, very gentle. He always had nice words to say to everyone he saw. He always said hello. He was just a very personable person. Now one day he was just passing by Ardskull and he thinks he hears music coming from the hill. He stops for a moment and he listens and he can definitely hear music. So he starts clambering up the slope of the hill, weaving between the trees, trying to follow the sound. Eventually it leads him to a little hole going deep into the hill. So he wanders in and eventually he starts seeing a light. He follows the light and he sees a huge open cavern but he doesn't step inside, not yet. Because in the cavern he sees a whole host of fairies dancing around the cabin and they're singing. And the words that they sang to themselves were Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. And so Martha, he stands there and he listens. He thinks, I can, I can probably help them continue this song. But I'll have a listen for a while first. So he stands there and he listens. And he begins to pick up the rhythm that they're using. He begins to understand the melody better. And when he thinks he's got enough of a handle on the song that he can interject his own performance in a fairly seamless fashion, he steps forward into the chamber and he shouts out, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And the fairies, they turn. They're all delighted with him. Amazing. This was a perfect addition to their song. They start dancing around, singing to themselves, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then they stop and they say to Martha, thank you so much for helping us continue our song. Thank you so much for the new word. Is there anything we can do to pay you back? Anything at all? And Martha, he thinks about this for a moment. Well, he says, you can tell by looking at me that I'm a hunchback. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not insecure about my appearance or anything like that, like, beauty is subjective, it's fine, I, I think I look fine, but, but, the other side of it is the chronic pain, I'm in bits all the time, do you think we could do something about it? And the fairies, they're like, ah, say no more, say no more, Marta. We understand, we understand completely. We'll take the hunch off your back. Sure, look at it, it's not there anymore. Look, see, it's down on the ground next to you. There's no hump on your back anymore. It's down there on the ground. Not gonna cause you any more pain. And Marta, he looks down and he sees his hump is just sitting there on the ground now. He also realizes that his field of view has been somewhat elevated. He feels for his back and it's as straight as a rod. Thank you very much, he says to the fairies. I don't feel a bit of pain anymore, nothing at all. Oh, thank you so much. I will tell everyone about your kindness, about, about, the, the, about the generosity of the fairies. Thank you. So he goes back into town and everyone is amazed to see that Murta Byrne doesn't have his hump anymore. He explains the story to everyone and everyone's delighted for it. Except one person. This person's name was Miles McAvoy. He was also a hunchback. But he had a very different disposition to Murta Byrne. He was a very 
cruel, miserly man, very ungentle and mean. And he thinks to himself, well, if he can do it, I'm going to do it as well. So Miles McAvoy, he goes up towards Skull. He listens for the music. He can hear the singing. He wanders through the woods, scrambles up the slope of the hill. He finds the hole in the ground. He walks down it and he can hear the fairy singing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Without a moment to consider the music. Without, without taking a moment to understand the rhythm, the meter, the melody of their song. He bursts straight into the chamber and shouts, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Dead silence. Before the fairies let out a single unified roar at him. How dare you interrupt our singing like that? How dare you be so rude? Miles panicking now he was looking all around him he saw Marta's hump laying there on the ground exactly where Marta said it was but then it was gone then it was gone from the ground and suddenly miles his field of view was lowered lowered even more he felt for his back and there was Marta's old hump lying on top of his he had two humps now he was double a hunchback You have to understand that the fairies, according to some, are the same people who had a law saying that only the whole and unblemished could be king. And the people who would put that kind of institutionalised ableism into their very system of government, well, they wouldn't hesitate at all to use disability as punishment, would they? See, the fairies, they understand all about things like law and obligation. But they don't understand a single thing about justice. It's very ironic that we call them the fair folk. 